Welcome to The Weaver Sews. I'm Daryl Lancaster. Craftsmen love their tools. We all have tools that we've had for eons and that are beloved and do the job intended well. Obviously, I have my favorites, not only in the sewing studio, but in the weaving studio as well. Pins are a pretty critical tool in any sewing studio. And we have a previous video that talks about pins at great length. But we have never really talked about things that cut. And that is sort of an important topic when working with handwoven fabric. First, I'd like to say, though I have no scientific proof of this, just a personal hunch, that handwoven fabrics in general are pretty hard on anything with a blade. That would be serger knives, shears, scissors, rotary cutting blades. Anything with a knife edge can be dulled over time with various hand wovens. And that's why I try not to use the knives on my serger to cut hand woven fabric. I use them to just trim off any frayed edges. It was my daughter who inspired this video. I have a lot of different things with blades in my studio, and my entire family grew up trained not to touch anything with a black, orange, or chrome handle found in my studio. And that included my late husband. And they all respected that. But not being able to handle and explore the various cutting tools in my studio meant that my daughter, as she films and edits these videos, was pretty clueless as to what did what. So let's start with the obvious dressmaker shears. I do have to say that any brand I mention is just a personal preference, and I'm not earning any financial reward for mentioning a brand. And likewise, if I don't mention a brand, it doesn't mean they aren't valid, I just have no experience with them. And most manufacturers make left-handed shears. So if you are left-handed, make sure you work with something that is comfortable. For most of my adult sewing life, I've always been a Ginger fan. What we refer to as a dressmaking shear is technically called a bent trimmer. This is so it can slip under fabric with little distortion while cutting as compared to a regular pair of scissors where the blades are centered between the handles. I have a number of Ginger shears or bent trimmers which I've had for many, many years. This is the Chrome 8-inch Bent Trimmer, and oddly enough, it isn't my go-to of sewing shears. I've found the Chrome trimmers get nicked easily, and I always preferred the lightweight bent trimmers easier on my hand. I've also dropped the Chrome trimmers a couple of times, and the blades get skewed. Ginger is owned by Fiskars but still has a sharpening and repair service, which I should send these out to. You can find that information online. I always preferred the lightweight shears with stainless steel blades and nylon handles. This is a really old pair and a more recent pair, slightly redesigned, but it is still old. Long ago, I replaced them with a different brand, which I'll get into in a minute, but I'll show you how well these held up. They now live in my weaving studio, and when I traveled on the road, they went with me everywhere. They cut the ends off duct ties for bias to piecing work. They cut through warps and cords, packaging and paper, and whatever else I needed them to do in my travels. They've even opened boxes. And the blades still cut silk. Go figure. I've always liked Fisker scissors and have had good luck with them. And you can't beat the price. Here is a brand new pair. I think I had a coupon for them. They feel really good in the hand. I particularly like the Spring Action Fiskers, which have been since redesigned but when I need to do a lot of cutting, these are easier on the hands. These two live in my weaving studio and have been used for all sorts of purposes that I would have never done with my good shears, yet they still cut silk. 
A number of years ago, I attended an American Sewing Guild conference, and there is quite an education to be had in the vendor hall. Many of the instructors at this particular conference used a brand of shears called Kai, K-A-I. They're from Japan. They were pretty pricey, and I spent some time in the Kai distributor's booth. I learned that a serrated edge blade grips the fabric, especially slippery satins or silks, adding a level of control to the cut. I don't cut a lot of silks, except for linings, and serrated blades are more expensive than a polished blade. But do I need them? I invested in a pair, and I also purchased a Kai 9-inch Professional Series bent trimmer from that vendor. Wow. I'm a complete Kai scissors convert. I don't use anything else in my sewing studio. I've been asked about using pinking shears on hand woven because the prevailing wisdom is that pinking shears stop raveling. The blade creates little bias hills and valleys and since bias doesn't fray, that should stop the edges from unraveling. Not exactly. I learned long ago not to use pinking shears to cut out a garment of any type since the cutting line is no longer obvious or accurate. Handwoven fabric will dull pinking shears pretty quickly and mostly you will just have dust on the edges and not a defined cutting line. Rotary cutters are not something that I grew up with back in the 60s, obviously but found later on in my career to be really, really helpful. I'm a fan of Olfa, mats and blades. Most of the other brands I've used in class situations have just frustrated me. Use a larger blade when cutting through layers of bulky fabric, a smaller blade when cutting shapes and tight pattern curves. Always cut on a surface designed to take a rotary cutting blade. The surface is self-healing and allows the blade to cut clean through the fabric, provided the blade is sharp. The Olfa ergonomic rotary cutter can be assembled for left-handed use. Just unscrew the blade and flip it over and reattach. I prefer to use the rotary cutter when cutting things like bias strips and small items when I need precision for things like piecing. For cutting yardage, I much prefer to use a bent trimmer. I did notice that Kai makes a rotary cutter. I will admit that I haven't tried it yet. When you have something that works, there isn't the need to go out and try other things. I want to talk about these little scissors called applique or duckbill scissors. These are from Ginger, and they are an important tool in my studio. I use them to trim seams. The large bill underneath helps keep whatever is underneath, where you're cutting out, out of the way. Mine are starting to get dull, and I probably should send them in for sharpening, which I understand is around $15, and a new pair is around $30. And I heard that serrated applique scissors exist. I did a quick search online and found a well-rated, colorful pair of serrated applique scissors on Amazon, so I ordered them. I'm looking forward to trying those. I did get in the duck-billed serrated edged scissors, and oh my god, I love them. I should mention that I buy all my sewing supplies, including shears, trimmers, rotary cutters, replacement blades, and pretty much anything else I need from Wawak. Their prices are very competitive and the service fantastic. Again, I don't get any financial reward for mentioning them, just I like the supplier. Let's talk about little cutting tools. I have these thread clippers all over my weaving studio. Every loom has a pair tucked into it within handy reach. Some are antiques, some are from Japan, and some are hand-me-downs. 
And I even have a pair from Fiskars. I have this little Ginger thread clipper attached to my Chatelaine. We talked about my Chatelaine in a Monday Mini. It does a great job clipping threads. This was a gift from my daughter for Christmas last year. It fits perfectly in my purse. Just don't take it on an airplane. But next to my sewing machine, I keep a pair of Ginger 4-inch embroidery scissors. A newer design has slightly thicker blades than my original one, which I keep on my Chatelaine. This is the tool I use when I want to rip out something I've sewn, which rarely happens. This is a seam ripper. I have a number of them, but I don't find them helpful for ripping out when things go wrong, working with handwoven fabric. The problem is, the stitches embed themselves in a lofty hand woven, and trying to pick them out can be tedious and sometimes dangerous for the fabric. I'm a big fan of clipping the bridge. Much less stress on the hand woven fabric and much easier to rapidly remove stitching that isn't correct. First, let me show you how I hold them. This is a skill I learned long ago and was fascinated to find out that my late husband, who was a utility pole climber for the telephone company in his youth, held his lineman shears in the same way. My thumb and index finger spread the blades and my palm closes them. I have concentrated control at all times over the points and can really target my clips. I've sewn together two pieces of handwoven cloth and backstitched at the end. Clipping through the backstitching can take patience, but once through, the two layers just open up, creating a bridge in between. Simply clip the threads in the bridge. Use the fingers of the opposite hand to help spread the layers apart as you work up the bridge. Not bad with a broken shoulder. I've often told students that I can take out their mistakes faster than they can make them. And that, of course, comes from years of practice. And because I can confidently cut through the bridge rapidly without worrying about damaging the fabric. I understand that Kai has a little four and a half inch embroidery scissors in their professional series. I really should try them. I hope this gives a little insight into cutting tools. The most important takeaway here is to find what works for you. There is nothing more frustrating than shears that don't cut clean. I'm Daryl Lancaster for The Weaver Sews.